For this week, I want to go over a couple of concepts uh, that we inc incorporate into our clinical practice, especially when we're restoring a full arch. And in this scenario, uh, we have implants in place, uh, in this case, five implants in the maxillary arch, and we also have multi-unit abutments in place as well. Now, hopefully what we're looking for is the shoulder of the multi-unit abutments to be at the tissue surface. Uh, in this case, uh, the tissue has overgrown slightly, and uh, you can actually go around that with your final restoration. So you don't necessarily have to replace your multi-unit abutments as long as you have access to them. So we were lucky enough to be able to place our impression copings. Uh, these are preliminary impression copings for a closed impression tray technique. Uh, just so we have an approximate distance between our implants uh, properly and we can request the laboratory to fabricate an implant verification jig. So uh, I was able to see the closed tray impression copings um, without much tissue removal. Now you can see uh, on the patient's uh, maxillary left canine area, I did have to remove uh, a little bit of soft tissue to access the shoulder of the restoration or the shoulder of the multi-unit abutment, I should say. Uh, so once we see the impression copings, I can go ahead and uh, capture a preliminary impression, uh, which I will then send to uh, Glidewell uh, for the fabrication of the implant verification jigs. Now there's, there are a couple of different ways of going uh, forward with this type of impression. Um, if you would like, you can actually skip the preliminary impression and utilizing open impression tray copings, you can connect them in the mouth with a little floss and some uh, GC pattern resin or composite and then you can capture a final impression with a open tray technique with a with a stock tray. The reason why I like to take a preliminary impression and uh, send that to the lab and have jigs back is uh, really twofold. First of all, I like to receive jigs that I can connect in the mouth and I can verify the inter-implant position. Uh, and secondly, I like to receive a custom tray from the laboratory. I feel like with a custom tray, uh, I can uh, do my border molding if I need to, and I can push the impression material to the areas that, that uh, really need to extend to in order to capture a very accurate impression. Um, the other way to go about with the implant verification jig is obviously once you have your final working cast, um, you can uh, create a jig on your cast and transfer that into the mouth and ensure that you have a verification between your working cast and the inter-implant relationship in the mouth. So in this scenario, we have the jig fabricated from the laboratory along with the custom tray. And you can see how nicely the custom tray fits over the cast. And what I do is one by one, I will place the, uh, the jig in the mouth and I make sure that I have a little bit of space between each jig uh, so that I can flow some GC pattern resin or in this situation some light cured composite uh, in order to capture a final impression. Uh, so one by one we will place those and I will go ahead and cure uh, some composite to connect these jigs together and uh, the composite is flowable so that I can go in between these areas and uh, once I place the composite obviously my assistant cures everything and we're ready to take the next step. Often what I'll do is once all these pieces are connected to each other I will remove this from the mouth to ensure that this is one solid unit and uh, I can also fill in some voids if I need to uh, but usually I'll try to do my best to connect these in the mouth and not have any voids. Uh, as you can see here, the underside was a little bit difficult to access, so I'll fill in some of the voids, but you have to take care to not go all the way down to the tissue level because that's where your impression material is gonna go. So in this case, we're using uh, some capture impression material and we're going to capture the tissue surface with the medium body and uh, we're going to pick everything up with the open tray impression technique with heavy body impression material and once the material is set I can go ahead and remove the jig and the impression all in one so the jig is embedded in our impressions. Now we have the uh, final impression uh, that we can fabricate our working cast with and all the restorations are going to be based on a verified working cast, which is going to be really important for uh, the fabrication of our final restorations to be seated passively and tension-free. 
So with that clinical tip, I wish all of our colleagues luck out there and uh, hope to see you back here for another case of the week in the near future.